Uh, good evening. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Norfolk School Committee for Tuesday, April 9th at 7.03 p.m. Uh, as we do with all of our meetings, we'd like to begin with reading our mission statement. The Norfolk Public Schools offers a safe, joyful, and challenging learning environment that meets the needs of our diverse students. Through school, family, and community partnerships, we provide an education that inspires lifelong learners and cultivates caring and productive citizens of our ever-changing world. Roll call. Mark Flaherty. Thomas Doyle. Sean Dooley. We're a little light on uh, committee tonight. Um, and, uh, Ingrid is unfortunately sick. Um, so we will be going with this. Uh, like we begin every meeting, uh, we would like to start off with public comment. Just remember that you are being taped for broadcast, so your voice and your image are being, will be spread out through NCTV for, and on the internet forever and ever. Not trying to intimidate anyone. No? Come on, buddy. You know you want to say something. You just you, you always talk. Uh, <laughs> Self-control. Okay. Seeing none, let's just move on to regular items. Um, we did have some uh, correspondence that we've been recognized as the Collaborative for High Performance Schools has recognized the Freeman uh, Kennedy School has ver been verified as a, a high performance school and has earned uh, compliance with the Massachusetts CHIPS program. So that was that was great. Uh, and uh, you know we do that, we try to go for that every year and we were able to receive that. Um, also we had a um, the donation, the Franklin Elks. Um, back in January they held their first Wings for Autism event. It was a day of comedy, music, and of course, chicken wings. Eight local eateries donated time and chicken with the intent of helping us raise money for a great cause. In addition, they had many raffle prizes and silent auctions. Uh, the day was a great success. They raised about $4,500. All this money was used to purchase brand new iPad 2s. We're now donating them to the five local elementary schools for use with their disabled autistic children. Uh, as you know, already know, there are many apps programs designed to Broaden these for young minds. We had we had the back of each iPad engraved Franklin Elks Wings for Autism, giving kids a voice. We intend to hold the similar events for years to come. We hope that these children are excited to use them this year. We were happy to donate them. We certainly hope to see the same from you again next year. So, from uh, that was from Mike Fico, the general manager of the Franklin Elks. So, um, is there a motion to accept these iPads? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And wanted to send out a thank you uh, over the airways. So we've already sent over a thank you note um, for this very, very generous donation. Uh, let's see. Moving right along, uh, school committee chair report. Um, the fees for uh, next year are um, currently are um, instrumental music. Uh, grade four being 100 starting in January, grade five and six, 180. Uh, bus fees were 180. I thought grade five and six was 200. Yeah, if you, if you could, because I was pretty sure that we did 100 and 200. That sounds familiar, but I don't know. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's 200, because that's, that's the reason grade four was 100. Yeah, so we split it directly. Because we half, split it directly in half. Year, so. Uh, so it was 100 and 200, 200 for grades five and six. That allows children that are entering the music program to get their first semester free. Um, and that way, if they like it, then they join the band program. Um, the bus fee was $180 uh, per student with a cap of two per family. Um, and that's for anyone under that lives less than two miles to school. Um, over two miles, it's, it's free per uh, state law. And then the lunch fee is three dollars. Um, unfortunately, we're still losing money on lunch, but um, I can't. You know, three dollars for lunch seems very high to me. I definitely can't how personally much justify. We, how much do we lose per lunch at three dollars? Well, it's it's it, 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 it's not quantified like that, but yeah, we're, we're losing about thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, one of the things that we are looking into on that is readjusting, uh, restructuring the cafeteria staff. As a as a means to minimize the uh, cost, you know, a lot of unfortunately, a lot of the cost is based on the the new requirements for 
healthy eating. So, uh, you know, healthier foods and fresher foods and vegetables and things like that are more expensive than a lot of the. Well, actually, a lot of the canned stuff, which I, I don't know what the what the school uses because I haven't seen the cafeteria in many many years inside of an elementary school. Uh, a lot of I remember it being a lot of canned uh, string beans and canned corn, and a lot of that is a lot more expensive than it is to get fresh stuff. And so, if, you know, if we could look at that some some way and see what we're spending on food and what kind we're getting, I have good experience in the restaurant business. Right. You know, and we can see how we can adjust that, maybe using uh, local and fresh ingredients and maybe cut back on the expenses for food costs. Right. You know, we could probably, we might be able to cut food costs down quite I a think bit. They try to do that to some extent, try to get from the, the sort of buy local deal, but just with, I mean, there's been a lot of food inflation yeah. the last few years, which is pricey, and then they're showing up to the federal guidelines for uh, healthy eating now. That has prompted people to promptly raise their prices, so uh, it's made it even more expensive. So, and it's it, pretty tough. Yeah, as I was saying, it's tough. You know, you know, and be, you know, being a small district, you know, our 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 volume. The other thing that I think that we're, that we're looking at is, you know, working with Rentham and Plainville and seeing if there's some way we can kind of form a consortium to have a little more of a buying power. And I know Ingrid's um, also looking at, um, uh, ha has looked into doing. Um, you know, working with some of the like the Sodexcos and some of the companies that you know you can outsource the food service to, and our numbers are too small. No one wants they to. Won't do it. No one wants to do. Well, they'll they'll do it, but for seven dollars a, yeah. a plate, um, you know, it's, it's just because we're so small. I mean, it's only you know, it's you know, it's you know, it's a few hundred lunches a day, and so that's that's the thing. So I mean, that's what we're that's what we're trying to cut. But I mean, three dollars. I mean, we. Three years ago, we were at two dollars, and then we went up to two fifty, and then three dollars. So, I think three bucks is getting pretty close to the tipping point. Where yeah. for much more people, like oh, just bring it. Bring it. Exactly. It's more trouble than it's worth. Here's your peanut butter jelly sandwich. Right. Assuming they're not allergic or whatever, but I don't know how much <laughs> more you can make it. Or sitting at peanut free table. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, so, it, I, personally, it's something I would like to look at. You know, you know, just you know, see what I can right. see in that. Probably the probably the best. Yeah, you know, one of the best venues to get in, involved with, and I thought I'd sent it to you once, is the Wellness Committee. Yeah, you, I, you talked about it, but I, you never actually sent me the information. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to remember to <laughs> the send it. step two is actually sending it to uh, was, <laughs> Well, I was going to say, he can go on the Internet and look up this, on the school website and look up the Wellness <laughs> Committee just as easily as I can See? and send it to you. So, wow. so, but if I have to do that for you, Mark, I will, be, I will, yeah, I will make a note. Anger directly, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get involved choices. with the Wellness Committee because they, they do a lot of work with that, but it's, you know. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's you know, it's, I mean, there's only so much that we can that you can do. But well, unfortunately, you know, you know, I do I do lunch duty, you know, a few times a month, um, and unfortunately, it's it's the nature of the beast. It's the high price, expensive items that you watch 90% go into the trash. Also because how much gets wasted? Yeah, it's a, ton, a ton of waste because the, you know the children they have to have you know this vegetable. They have to have you here's know this. Here's another and, idea. And then they just you know they. They're they're eating all they they get five items on their plate. They're eating the three unhealthy ones and they're dumping the two healthy ones. I mean it's Here's it's a question if we can. Third grade, yeah. I don't know if we can do this. I don't know what the regulations would be, but oh, I know that if you get the kids involved in the food, you know they'll be more apt to eat the healthy items if they have actually assisted in the preparations. So <laughs> I don't. Wasn't child labor? I don't know where you're going. No, no, no. It, you know, we could do it as like a health and wellness class or health and wellness program in the school where a group of kids each day will, you know, they, I know they can't use the knives in the kitchen, they can't chop food, but, you know, they can help mix things, you know, and if they actually see the way it's being done and they actually go, oh, well, I did this, and they're more apt to actually eat it. Well, I, I, I agree, but unfortunately we don't have, you know, health and wellness got cut years ago from our from our curriculum and you know so i mean that would be you know great great concept mm -hmm. but i think that's one of those things that you know when we were, were able to add back in foreign language and health and wellness i think that's a great thing to incorporate in and teach kids more about healthy eating and things like that but the teachers you know are stretched yeah. you know stretched then you know without bringing in you know, and then you really you can't have a math teacher be teaching you know nutrition then we were having a hiring a nutritionist and things along well, those lines well you teach them how to add up the calories yeah so, <laughs> so. 
Yeah. So I mean, you know, and then, yeah, you know, and, and, then you know, and then there's, you know, unfortunately, just a level of you know yeah. federal guidelines on what you can do and what you can't right. do at certain levels, and you know, and then you also get into the area of, you know, determining what, you know, you know, the, you, you don't want you don't you don't want to start preaching nutrition needs when you don't know kids individual. Right. I, I understand that, but you know, it's just the point, like, right? Because I know it, that's what got me into food. You know, maybe not in so good of a way because I ate a lot, but yeah, actually, I don't, I don't know if you're the for this. <laughs> doing, doing a home ec course when I was going going to school, or, right. you know, I took culinary arts in high school. You know, and just seeing the I ate stuff that I never even thought I'd like because hey, look, right. I made that. Right. Oh, I, I agree. I agree, but I think that's one of those things that you know. Down the road, when our budget situation gets better under control, then we know that's something that we can look at. Okay. So, but I'll, I'll get you the information on the health and wellness right. committee because um, I think you know er, anything that we can do to get the kids eating more healthily, I think is, is phenomenal. But from a budget standpoint, I just I agree with Thomas that so I think it's I think we're kind of at the tipping point that if we go up to 350, 350, you stop buying lunch. People okay. are going to stop buying lunch, and then it's, then it's going to be we're going to lose even more money because we're going to still have the same base costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Is there a motion to uh, keep the fees the same as they are so for moved. next year? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Um, school choice. Um, every year we have the opportunity to um, vote uh, in or out of school choice. School choice is, is the program that allows, um, if, you, if you participate in it, then any student from around the Commonwealth can come into, this, into the Norfolk schools. Um, we've, Norfolk schools have never participated in in the past. Um, so is there a motion to opt out of school choice? So we've never participated in this? In we've never have. All right, we'll continue that trend. I'm just curious, I, you know, do we... Oh, we, have, we, have, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, you, 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 moved, you moved it. I, so, I oh, considered I you continuing that trend. I'm sorry. I was just second. All right. All right. Discussion. You know, do we, as the school system, get anything out of having the other kids from out of the district or whatever coming to the school? You know, do we get any compensation? Do we get anything uh, we that get, might help us out? We get, you know, nominal compensation. Is it something that we could actually use to our benefit, you know, because I know like where our budget's really tight right now, it, you it, know. In every study that I've read, it, it's, it's not cost advantageous. Okay. Because I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm hugely in favor of kids being able to choose what school they go to. Because especially if you live in an area where the school is not so good, you're more apt to drop out. And I'd rather see the kids succeed at school than to drop out just because the school that they're going to, for lack of a better term, stinks. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, I, I mean, I know how it is. I went to Tri-County and I just said, you know what, forget it. And I left because was not a good school back then, <laughs> you know. So, I, for me, as a school district, and our even our motto, you know, we need to, we want to foster a good learning environment. And I think if we can bring kids in that need that good learning environment, I think it might be beneficial. You know, just because we've never done it before doesn't mean well, we shouldn't do it. Every year this comes up for discussion. Every year the professional recommendation for whoever the superintendent is at the time not to do it. Um, based on various professional reasoning that's given. I mean, your point as far as dropout, I'm not really as concerned about that with elementary school level. I mean, yeah, if we were a K-12, that's a different story. Right, there would have right. to be more consideration of that. I don't think on um, this level that's as pressing of a need. And as you said, the recommendation has always it, been not to do it. So. It kind of is because when, if you have a bad impression of school when you're starting out, you're going to carry that impression forward, you know? So, you know, I mean, it's, it's my opinion. Right. And, the, and, the, and then the other thing is from a budgetary standpoint um, that, that we have a policy that, um, you know, all of a sudden we get three kids in from another district. We're, you know, in three different grades. We may have, that may force us based on our budget, or based on our policy of maximum of 22 in, element, in lower elementary and 25 in upper elementary to hire three additional teachers. Um, so, you know, we could, you know, in theory need to hire six new teachers and get a revenue stream of twenty-four thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. So you know, 
be, be, be out three hundred thousand and take in twenty four thousand. I mean, it's yeah. I see what you're saying. So I mean, that's you know, that's that's one of the that's one of the. Of the that, that, well, at this well that's one of the recommendations, because and also it's one of the big wild cards. I mean, it just gives you, you know, and this, you know, you know. Can you talk to Dr. Alardi about this before uh, yep. the meeting? Yep. And she recommends against it. Oh. She doesn't see any advantageous for uh, advantage for us to okay. to do it. So, but you can vote against it this time. <laughs> uh, so, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess. Aye. I'll Aye. Regretfully, I'll go. No, mm -hmm. feel, feel free, free to no. say no. I, no, it's, oh, that's, yeah. you make good points, and you know, I just, you know, the budget's no. As I said, and I think you make a good point as well. But it's uh, unfortunately, you know, our priority yeah. has to be the you know the children in Norfolk. It, yeah. Uh, and, our, and our yeah. increasingly tight budget. I, I agree completely. Okay. All right. So chair report. If I now that I've lost my place, yeah. past two fees. Right, right uh, We're skipping right. superintendent entirely. Uh, uh, no, I'm going to do superintendent. Oh, you're so uh, calendar update, uh, exhibit number four. We just need to revisit this uh, from the standpoint of what we had was um, in April, what the calendar we voted had the um, school vacation on the week of the 14th through the 18th. And... Um, and so we're go we're going to move that to the 21st through the 25th to correspond with King Philip and the other two, uh, the other two towns. So it was just a no. It was just basically a clerical error. I also believe that the 18th it marks it as a full day off on this. I think it should be a half day for Good Friday. Well, good oh, oh no, that's right. No, it was going to be a full day. Yeah, it was full day. Okay, so it should be a full day. So that's right. And then we also moved the um, professional development day that was going to be, yeah. since, since it was going to be the 11th um, um, of, of April, was going to be a professional development day before oh, spring right, break, right, yeah. um, moved that to the 17th of January. So a half day prior to the Martin Luther King weekend. Oh, okay. So just because no sense having one on the 11th, keeping it on the 11th. You know, and then right. off the next Friday, and then yeah, launch yeah, off the it, next two Fridays. Right, probably. exactly. Okay. So, so we just moved that just to kind of spread that out a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Exhibit five. We've uh, done a great job of bringing in um, past due past due fees. So, as of right now, we still have. A little bit, but as of you know, two months ago when we started this, we had fifty-five hundred and eighty dollars in bus fees, and that's down to three hundred and sixty. We had seventy-two hundred in band fees, that's down to four seventy. Uh, fourth grade band fees, we had sixty-two hundred, and that's down to nine hundred. And uh, pre-K fees went from eighteen thousand down to seven thousand, and kindergarten fees went from twenty-two thousand down to twelve thousand. Um, and so, you know, so, so we're making progress. Obviously, you know, we still have $21,000 um, outstanding. And past year's fees, we're still, you know, we still have, you know, $3,000 from past year's. You know, last year's fees that were still outstanding were 11240 And it's down to 2865 So we've been able to collect $46,000. We still have $24,000 out there. But it's a much more manageable number than seventy-one thousand dollars that we were originally going after. So, um, you know, so, you know, some some of these, unfortunately, are going to be ones that are caught, you know, two, three, four years in the future. That's you know, kind of I think we we need to kind of change the fee agreement with some of these things that we can, you know, either charge them interest or something like that going forward. Because you know, this person who didn't pay their kindergarten fee last year, you know, they don't have anything, and we really don't have anything. You know, if they're not taking the bus, that's the or, way you know, get it recovered. Yeah, we, you know, except for asking them and you know, <laughs> you know, explain to them until their kid decides that they want to take band or something else. You know, you know, another extracurricular. There's nothing that we can, yeah, 
do you know since we don't have it in the agreement for you know taking them to court and everything like that i mean we can we can talk to our attorneys at that point if you know at the end of the summer if this is still well, the new policy that we put we, into we right exactly but you can't you know yeah we can't right. we can't retroactively right. right. yeah, right. yeah, right. 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 so in the future these will be you know a lot better but you know we, we have able to recover them more easily in the future but so great job pam Pam, Pam has been spearheading this, and it's done a great job. And a school improvement plan we're going to we're going to skip. But next we have a special guest. You have like strobe lights or any like real real like tech Entry music. We have the tech committee coming. The technology committee, technology team. Just, uh, <laughs> I was about I was about to call him Adam Sandler. So by Adam Steiner, Adam Sandler would be if you can do an Adam Sandler impression, you know, you know, that would be even better. Um, Adam Steiner, if you want to. Come up and present. Are you going to be using? We are. Okay, so we're we. Presenting okay, perfect. So this is the tech update for the year. So <clears throat> the whole tech team is here tonight to share some um, snippets of what's going on in the district around technology use. So this is not uh, a comprehensive overview of everything we're doing. It's a few really what we think are great examples of work that teachers are doing every day with technology. Um, so each member of the team is going to be presenting one example. I'll be starting off with uh, an art project that Bill Riley is doing, and Raphael will be presenting on fifth grade intranets. Mark Peasy will be um, showing us a project done by Ellen Horton on Japan. Bonnie will be discussing iPad use in the classroom, and Trish will be finishing off with a, a bang on acuity and data use in the district. Um, so the reason why I chose Bill Riley's project is that, to me, it's a great example of technology use that's really enhancing a great piece of instruction that already exists. It's not um, changing what he's doing, it's just doing it in a better way. Uh, so the idea of the project is that uh, Bill selects a really great piece of art. And traditionally, he might have students you know, recreate a, their own version of that piece of artwork. But using technology, what he does instead is he projects the project on the screen. And using the, the smart board, he's able to project a grid pattern on the piece of artwork that divides it into sections, enough sections so that every student can be assigned one of them. And then the students um, individually recreate the section of the project. And then they work collaboratively to put all these pieces together and adju make adjustments and then produce a very, you know, um, their own version of that artwork that's there. Uh, so the first step is to project a piece of art and the students are assigned a section of the piece of artwork. You can see it a little better in this next slide. Uh, the green lines are, are, that's really the technology component, the projection and the use of the green lines to divide the artwork into these sections. Once the students are assigned a section, they start to do a drawing. And the first stage is just a pencil drawing, so they have time to erase and make adjustments. And also to get together and start to match up their work. So that's, you know, that's a really cool thing about this, is it's creating collaboration, whereas otherwise it would be an individual assignment. 
It's forcing the students to get together and say, oh, you know, this looks right, but it doesn't line up with mine. Can we move this around and really make them so they match up better? And eventually, in pencil, they put the whole recreation together, make those final adjustments. Once that's done, they're ready to, to go to paint and fill in the colors. In the same way, paying attention to the, you know, the collaborative part of it so that the colors line up. Once they've done all those adjustments, they flip everything over, tape it from the back, and then as sort of the final reveal, display the completed work. Uh, so, you know, to me, again, I, I give Bill a lot of credit. I think this is a, you know, a great project that he really developed, a way to, you know, bring technology into the classroom, stay faithful to the, you know, the art component of it, uh, but use technology to do something that you couldn't do otherwise, and that's to bring the students together around collaboration. And now I'm going to hand it over to Raf to talk about classroom internets. So we had our fifth grades, two of our fifth grade teachers collaborating on intranets and doing a few different projects, um, and us utilizing the internet pages within their classrooms in order to publish their work and enhance what they've been doing in that classroom. So one of the units was astronomy. And what they did there was they gave the children the directive on the project from within the web page. And each child would then work on an individual page on whatever they've been assigned. And um, so they, fill, they fulfill all the uh, requirements of the project and they get exposed to you know, web development and being able to embed videos and things like that. They do some research and begin to work collaboratively within a digital workspace. So that's one of the videos that they've put into their website. The next project that they did was Explorers. So two classrooms worked collaboratively, both digitally and uh, in groups here. Um, they had to pick Explorers and fulfill, again, requirements on um, their explorers, where they, were, where they started from, where they originated, what they were trying to do. Uh, each group of children picked an explorer and using both you know, iPads, laptops, um, all the different types of technology that they were, had available to them, again created websites and they were able to work both in the classroom and at home in order to um, complete project. Here's kind of an overview of what they completed. So in addition to the internet, they also used Google Maps and were able to plot um, on the map where different locations that their explorer had been. Um, so we have here the birthplace and the death place of that explorer. Um, using the comment section from within each internet, they were able to communicate with one another and also with the teacher and get feedback as they worked on their project. And it's an ongoing communication between them, um, both in class and potentially for homework while they were working on this. Again, they were researching online, finding different um, information, fulfilling all the needs of their standard project, embedding video. Another use of that, uh, another project that they were working on was Hall of Fame. So each child chose a person from history who is no longer living, and this originated as a project where they would 
pick this person, make a script, and then in person, they would have Hall of Fame Day. And all the children and all the teachers would come through the classrooms and they would have a little speech that they would um, give to the person. So using technology, they would pair up and they would give this speech while another child records them. Um, at the end, once they've compiled all the video, they would go to the computer lab, use iMovie in order to edit all the video down, uh, work on you know, slides and different things like that. So it's kind of a combination of both digital and painted work here. So we have some artwork that they did. Here's an example of one of them. Congratulations. Optimism is the central ingredient of innovation. How else can the individual welcome change over security? The inventor of saying the same places? I don't know what that means either, but a wise man once said that, and that was Dan Razai, Robert Joyce. I made the computer possible by inventing the integrated chip. Thank you for dominating. I grew up in Grinnell, Iowa. I was a physics major at Grinnell College. I later received a PhD in physics from MIT. In 1957, I invented Fairchild Semiconductor and invented the integrated chip there. An integrated chip is better transistors combined into one chip. It is a very important part for the processes that run today's computers. I stayed with Fairchild until 1968 when I left to found Intel. Intel is a very important company in today's computers. The processors, they run, they have chances are they run your computer. And this iPhone. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, my life came to an end in 1990 when I died of heart failure. And my family, however, created the Noise Foundation to help young children with arithmetic and other school subjects. I might be gone, but my spirit and hard work still alone. Thank you. I did tell a production. <laughs> So with that project, they were able to have exposure to video editing, different um, solutions for obtaining the video. They've used iPads, laptops, um, desktops in order to research, compile, and then eventually publish. And they'll also be um, putting those into the internet as well, along with a few different other projects that they've been working on. Sure. Uh, internet is a secured website where only members of that classroom or community of classrooms have access to. So the children themselves have logins, or they have to log into the website in order to be able to access any of the information within there. Um, as a school, we've been slowly expanding this and we've got groups of classrooms or just specific classrooms that have been starting to do things like this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark. I'm a uh, technical support specialist for Norfolk. Um, one of the ways that we incorporated technology this year was with an after school project in Ellen Horton's fifth grade class. Um, the concept behind it was uh, Ms. Horton had a student in her class who's native to Japan. Um, she has lived there for a few years until she was at the age of six. Um, at the beginning of the year, the students expressed interest about learning about Japan and the Japanese culture. Uh, the student was also interested in sharing with her classmates and was also willing to take on the role of the teacher, or in her case, the sensei. Um, however, Ms. Horton was unable to find the time during the school day to complete this, so she had asked the students and their parents if they would be available after school um, about once every two weeks to work on this project. Um, now, we wanted to capture the lessons to be able to share them with any of the students that weren't able to attend the after school lessons, so we decided to use the iPads for this. Now, the iPad 2 and 3 models have built in cameras that are able to take videos and record videos. So, using four of the iPads as cameras, we are able to record the lessons from different angles. Now, if we were constantly filming with all four of these iPads at once, Editing the videos down would be too much of a task. So Raphael, found, Raphael and I found an app that actually makes this process a whole lot easier. And it's called Collabracam. 
And what Collabricam allows you to do is film and edit live video with up to four simultaneous streaming feeds. So basically, one iPad will act as the director, while the other four iPads will act as a camera. And the Collabricam works over a Wi-Fi network, and once they're all connected, the camera feeds will show up on the director's iPads. So although all four cameras will be simultaneously streaming on the director's iPad, he will choose one of them that will be the actual iPad that's recording. Now he also has the opportunity to communicate with the camera operators by sending commands such as tilt up or pan left if they're not on the right angle or anything. Um, and both, uh, all the camera iPads have a status light on them. Now uh, if you are recording you will have a red status light and if you're on standby you have a blue light so you know when you're up. Um, and this enables the production crew to communicate and work as a team during a live recording. And when the recording is over, all the video clippings are imported from the cameras to the director iPad. And the clippings are pieced together and the end result is basically an, a video that has already been edited. And as you can see in this picture right here, we have the presenter in the middle with four camera people all around here. Now, not all of the cameramen or women are focused on the presenter. As you can see, one of them is focused on the document that she's holding. So the camera will be focused on two different angles where the director can choose which feed he wants. Um, I spoke with the students before sessions and instructed them to, you know, some, someone focus up close on her face, someone focus far away, and maybe someone else focus on any of the documents or props that are handed out. Um, we also utilize the smart board in these lessons plan. In this picture, the students were watching a Japanese karaoke video, and you can see that there are two camera people also filming that. Um, the smart board was great because we also were able to use Google Maps, and we were able to plug in the presenter's home address in Japan, and they were able to actually use Google Street View and walk down the street that she used to live on, which the, the kids thought were really cool. Um, they also showed some Japanese music videos and an actual uh, a walkthrough of an ancient Japanese ninja house, which was also pretty interesting. So once the filming process was done, they would take all their video and they would import it onto the two desktop computers in Ellen's room, and from there they would edit the videos down. They would use iMovie to do this, and since Collabricam pretty much took care of all the editing, they were able to focus their time on adding titles, adding transitions, and effects. Um, the after school sessions were about 45 minutes long, and Ellen would, uh, wanted the videos to be cut down to 30 minutes, so the students had to figure out what content was scrappable and what was good. Um, the finished videos were then uploaded to YouTube. Um, we made them unlisted, so if you were to search for them, you're not able to find the video for security purposes. And those videos were then uploaded to Ellen's intranet site that Raphael spoke of before. So the uploaded videos, I do have a little clip right here. Um, the uploaded videos were put on Mrs. Horton's private internet site. Um, so only the students who were in the class, students who weren't able to attend the after school sessions, could access and then watch. And as you can see, they've been able to add intros, they clip, um, at one point they do some Japanese text over it, um, and this was the first time that a group of students were success, we were successfully able to record, edit, and upload a presentation from one of their peers, and it's a cool way to utilize the iPad rather than just using the educational apps that are put on there. I thought the camera feature was really cool. It engaged the students. They were, you know, they're really excited to stay after school for once, which I thought was great, and I'd, I'd like to try that again next time. Um, and I will pass it off to Trish. Is that you? Hey, Mark, can, can you use the um, smart board as an active camera, as it were, you know, from the standpoint of how they count? You, you know, would be able to videos use... Videos that you're playing automatically download as opposed to filming them. You would be able to use the, the camera from the laptop that's connected to the smart right. board. So I could use that, that camera to have a live feed on the smart board. Okay. I don't know. It went through it to church. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's 
side equities. So as I watch theirs, I just get really, really excited, having been involved in technology for a long time around here. Um, as you can see, these two guys have brought, brought it to a whole nother level. Um, but there is the basics, and so that's where we've started down at DH all day. And we started with, how do you get them out of the cart without dropping them? How do you, all that good stuff. And it's very, um, I, I love the words that they kept using because the whole idea of collaboration and how they get moving on this, the other huge piece was engagement. And that's what you're gonna see here. And you see how quickly they're hooked on all of them. Um, the, it does present certain, certain issues though. They do also have to learn when they log in one app, they have to, how do, you, how do you close it down? So we found some things that we can have logins to, but we also um, have taught them all the basics there. The apps have been selected, basically mo most we've worked on free stuff first, but the technology committees are also working on um, how are we gonna put it into the curriculum and what are we gonna use for apps. So although we do have a small budget for apps, we, we really wanted the classroom teachers to look at that. Um, a couple that we've bought through TPA grants as well as other things, uh, Learning A to Z was part of a suite that we've bought in reading and they have a thing called Raz Kids where the kids get in and they log in and they, they go into their leveled reading and then they do comprehension tests within it. Um, that's become an active part of lots of the reading classes. You'll see the card outside classrooms and they'll only take five for their classroom and, and you'll have four classrooms using the card at the same time. So they've done a great job at, at sharing the one card. Scoot Pad's another app that Ann McKenzie found for us that's, um, it has a login, it has customized common core things. So our teachers have done a lot with starting to get in that. We're actually gonna do some professional development on Friday um, with Ann McKenzie who has done an awful lot and she's actually found an, an app that you can do a search for um, any level and subjects that um, with all kinds of descriptions and we'll be doing some of that on Friday. But I think that as you, as you look, these kids can get in and out because at the moment I only have like 30 minutes with each of the classes. Um, they can get in and out and they quickly become very independent with working on these. Um, they get their differentiated instruction through in, these, in the two samples that I gave you. Those are things that teachers have a login in, they can set them up on their individual levels and fly off from there. Um, you know, kids are reading at, at their, what we call just right level in RAS kids. And 98% of the kids you'll see on task all the time, except for the ones that are a little curious about what I'm doing there with the camera. Um, but they, it, I guess the engagement in the on task is just the thing that's always amazing. And like Mark said, he only had 45 minutes after school with these kids. And the fact that they can just get in there and do it is, is really, um, really neat. So um, that's our, that's our technology. And, with, uh, we, we decided to focus on iPads because the other stuff was all pretty much going for it. I'm Trish Kelly, I'm the District Data Specialist. And let's see, Raphael, you knocked my slides out of place here. <laughs> Um, well, Raphael's putting my slides back in place. Um, so I am the district data specialist. I don't have a lot of really fun, creative stuff like Mark and Raphael and Bonnie have. I have the dry data that is so necessary for our district. So what I'm going to tell you is what we collect for data and how we use the data. And um, the data is collected for the state and for the federal government. And we have some local data. And the local data is used for assessments. So the only time the children have any interaction with me is for a test time. So it's not as fun as these guys here. Um, 
May I say? I think so. So. so the type of data that, um, that I am responsible for, so the integrity of the data, the maintenance of the data for reports uh, like these. This is just a small sample of the reports that I do throughout the year. Um, the SIMS report is all the student information system. So what it is, it's like 52 elements on every child that has to be reported three times a year up to the state. Uh, the EPIMS report also is done uh, several times a year, and that is the Education Personnel Information Management System. Who's licensed? How are they licensed? Are they licensed on, ta um, on target, um, certifications, etc.? The SCS is the student course schedule. Every student in the district from K to 6 has to have a course schedule, and I'll show you why that is in a minute. The um, SAC report is a school attending children report. We have to report to the state on every child that is school age eligible that lives in Norfolk, whether they go to school here in our public school district or whether they're at Severian or Ursline or wherever they may be. We have to report once a year on all of those students. The next report is called Park Technology Readiness Tool. This is a series of six reports that is mandated by the state which feeds up to the federal government. This report came out um, about six months ago. It's brand new, and what it is is to get ready for the park assessment. The park assessment is going to. Excuse me. <laughs> the park assessment is going to replace MCAS in um, ELA in math. So this park readiness tool is important for every state nationwide to report to their state, which goes up to the federal government, on how ready are you to do this with technology. The new assessments that are coming out are going to be online assessments nationwide, and we'll talk about that. The SSDR is the School Safety and Discipline Report. Every district in the Commonwealth has to report this once a year on all the safety and discipline that's going on in their uh, buildings. The McKinley-Vento report, um, this report here is uh, about homeless students in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Each district, there's over 400 districts, each district has to report on that once a year. Um, that report, since I've taken on, has gone up to 15,000 homeless students in our tiny state of Massachusetts as of last July that are homeless that are actually enrolled in a school somewhere in the state. And um, one of the last reports, which is a huge report, is the U.S. Department of Education and Civil Rights Report. And that just takes forever. What is the data used for? Um, the data is used to track students across districts over time to determine educational progress, monitor programs, and develop accountability measures. It is also used for Chapter 70 state aid reimbursement, state and federal grant calculations, district profiles on the web, circuit breaker money, and NC, um, I should explain that to you, National Center for Educational Statistics, federal child count of special education on students, to strengthen DESE's ability to use quality data to inform policy and program improvement, evaluate current education practice and programs, anticipate district employment needs, and collect accurate data on HQ status, which is the highly qualified status for teachers in our Commonwealth. Um, this is just a quick sample of a data collection. Uh, on the far right, you see SIMS, SCS, and EPIMS. What I was saying earlier about explaining about the students needing a course schedule, all of these dovetail with each other. So you have the for first report, SIMS. You transmit your data to the state. You get down to the point where you get to the submit, and your data stops there. It's in a holding pattern. And it's in a holding pattern because it's waiting for your SCS. Now it says, here are all your children in your district. Where are they all day long? They want to know who they are with all day long as well. The last report says who they're with. So you, they can see that you know, the fifth grade math teacher has these students at this time during the day. 
It all came to fruition. People said it wouldn't come to fruition, but it all came to fruition. So now they know who's teaching what, how are those children doing when the MCAS scores come out and evaluations come out. It all dovetails in. So these three reports are submitted three times a year and they dovetail with each other. And if you get to a certain point where you have a child registered over here, but you may not have a course schedule, it will pop back out. Or if a teacher is not assigned certain students at a certain time of day, that will pop back out. These reports are very, very important as we move forward with um, teacher evaluation, um, the park assessment. It's very interesting what's going on at the state level with that. Local data that's collected. The local data that's collected um, that I deal with with the students um, is through a product called Acuity. Acuity is a district-wide assessment tool used by Norfolk Public Schools in math and ELA, which is administered three times a year. Acuity is delivered on the iPads, the desktops, the laptops, smart boards, and if needed, it will be done on paper and pencil. Why is this important? Because the park assessment, which is coming down the road, and it's going to replace MCAS, is going to be all done online. We have an edge here in this district because we are doing local assessments already online. The company um, that owns Acuity is McGraw-Hill, and McGraw-Hill has been selected by the PAC Consortium to be an item writer. They are writing the items that will be on the PAC assessment. So the kids here have an opportunity to have a look and feel two years ahead of before this mandated assessment comes out. So what we have here is um, with Acuity, it allows the teachers to observe and measure student understanding, analyze test results, provide targeted instruction, close learning gaps, and differentiate instruction. I'm just going to show you what the kids see when they go into the lab. They go for a fall benchmark, a mid-year assessment, and a year-end assessment. They log into their Acuity account. It would look like this. Um, and it says, what would you like to do today? And there's take a test, study, or view reports. The children click on take a test. And then it will give them a selection. Are you taking math or are you taking language arts? And they'll select which one that we're doing in the district at the time. And they'll get a screen like this if we're in math. Um, they will have a math problem on the side. And at the top, you can see here, um, this will bring them back to the previous question. This will move them to the next question. Over here, there's a little speaker. So some of our younger students, let's say in K and 1, um, when we do some language-based things, this will read it to them. And so everyone in the lab in K and 1, they'll have the headsets on and this will be reading. So everybody's working independently while they're listening to the question. This little button allows them to erase their answer if they want to go back, and this one will bring them out of the program. When they get to the end of the test, um, what they can do here with the yellow button is to save and exit. That's, let's say, that they didn't finish in the time that we, you know, the kids had the lab signed up. Um, they can save and they can come back and it will pick up right where they left off. Also, if they didn't answer any questions, the teacher can see that on the screen and it will say it was not answered and she'll circle them back again. Let's take another look at this. When they click the finish button, the nice thing about this program is the assessment is graded automatically and it goes into an electronic grade book for the teacher. So within the first 15 minutes after the students finish this, after the class is finished, that teacher can go in and open the electronic grade book and they show exactly what every student got on the assessment. The teacher would log in and she or he would get something that looks like this. It would tell them what the score is, where the child falls. Over on the far right, it shows you um, the standard that that particular math question was associated with in the curriculum. And it will tell you how many they got right out of how many that um, were presented. It will also say over here, this is little button here, and it says assign. So if there were four questions and the child didn't get any of them right, it will say, do you want to assign a small lesson based on this question with this curriculum here, with this standard that goes with that, 
do you want to assign that? So if the teacher clicks on assign, again, it pulls a 10 question lesson and it puts them back into their login. So when they log in and they see, do you want to take a test or do you want to study, if they hit study, there's a little lesson in there with 10 questions. They complete that and that goes back into the teacher's electronic grade book and the teacher at that time can see, okay, how did they do? Did they get it this time around? And that little mini lesson comes with like four examples before they get started so it just goes over the lesson again. So here you see uh, we are using it in all the classrooms across the district um, in a lot of different ways. Here you see one child working here on Acuity on his laptop. This um, student is over here on the desktop with her headset on and here's the teacher logged into Acuity getting the grades as these two are working on totally separate subjects and she's logging in and seeing how well they're, they're doing. Here's another example of um, observing. So a teacher would assign the students, let's say there's something here on um, compound words, she would assign in Acuity, there's a lot of games, um, not just the um, dry assessment, there are some really fun games, and so she'll assign something like that, and she'll be able to measure the student's understanding. Closing the learning gaps, so what we have here is, um, if you have a small group that when the, the class roster came back with all the grades in it, and you see that there's a small group that maybe we're on the lower level, you could close the learning gap by recreating, let's say, a fractions class on uh, one of our programs that sits in Acuity, which is called Brain Pop. And they would redo the fraction lesson, and you could do it in a small group, or you can do it in a larger group if you wanted to. But again, you could bring it up on the smart board, or you could individually um, give it to them. And again, you can provide targeted um, instruction because it gets down to the nitty gritty level of exactly what strand in the curriculum that they're not getting or what skill they're not getting. And the, uh, t the admin team sits down together, we analyze the results, and we see what students have moved from one tier to the, uh, to the next tier over the course of the year and what we have to do to differentiate the instruction. And I have this little quote here, um, fear is not everyone getting the same thing. Fear is everyone getting what they need. And with this product, um, what we've seen over the last couple of years is that you can differentiate the instruction so every student gets exactly what they need. Whether they're the highest student or the lowest student, everyone can get what they need. I think it's also important to add that Trish has been a great resource for the teachers on this because at H all day, they didn't have the cus they they had to customize all the tests. There were no canned tests in there. So she had to help them write and get it all in there and coordinate it with the resources that were in there too. So it's it's been amazing. Snack them out of the way. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, and we got a, we got we got a car as a bonus. Awesome. Um, and I, thank you very much to the technology team. Thank you. And uh, I, I was going to say I really like the especially the beginning part of Trisha's report. Um, a lot of times parents are asking me what an unfunded mandate is, um, and you know, you know why why we need you know why do we need people in central office and you know can't we just run it you know you know run it ourselves? It's not you know it's not the rule you know the world of the one-room schoolhouse anymore. Um, you know, the amount of, you know, you know Trish could probably have another full-time person and, and still have a very busy day. Um, the amount of, you know, things that the state house comes down and the federal government comes down that we have to report back to, um, you know, in order just to stay compliant. You know, we don't, and we don't get, we don't qualify for most of the grants. Um, so it's not like we're being paid for doing all this stuff. This is all stuff that is coming out of our tax dollars and it's not going toward teaching the children and you know, hopefully in the big scheme of things it it helps develop better federal systems but it's a it's a you know it's a big expense it's a huge time crunch that um, we don't have any choice on it's not something that we've decided that we're going to do this you know acuity or we, we're going to do the you know the you know civil rights reporting because we found it to be interesting it's you know I think we've got this on 
four existed prior to what five years ago. They yeah, well, since I, I yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know when Trish got hired, I mean, her job just that first year doubled, you know, during the, during the course of the first year. So, um, so for, for those people out there, that's that's one of the, when, it, when people are asking me what, you know, where did some of these uh, monies go to. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, committee reports. But thank you guys very much. You guys thank can you. take off if you want, or you can feel free to stay for our committee reports. <laughs> They're leaving. <laughs> What a shocker. <laughs> You're going to film them leaving? Good. <laughs> um, all right, committee report. Nest. Um, Nest has uh, requested a fundraiser. Um, they're going to be um, making uh, t shirts uh, that just, you know, just plain, um, kind of a gray t shirt that says Norfolk on it um, for use at, um, to, to sell as a fundraiser. They're going to be doing it at Community Day and then also at the um, open houses. Uh, in the fall, doesn't say anything else. Just says Norfolk. Just a pure, purely. There's you know, a, a, you know, like a, on a lot of uh, a lot of you know, especially the Cape Towns and things like that. There's just very very simple things. Uh, we 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 looked into it and we talked to um, some vendors and they said in a lot of other towns they do it and it's very very a very popular fundraiser because people want to have things that say their town um, and that way it, it would be the largest volume as opposed to doing just a Freeman Kennedy shirt or just a HOD shirt, um, and so that was their or our since I'm on the board um, decision to do for our, our our next fundraiser. So we need to get that approved. For John Belushi and Animal House. Exactly. College, exactly. College, so exactly. The same thing, I guess. So, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, budget subcommittee. Um, we presented to the advisory board last month. Um, it went well. They didn't have many questions. Um, we, we showed them that we wanted the, you know, the 4.3 percent. We went through. The, uh, uh, Dr. Olardi went through the entire history of, you know, the, the budget, and that we've been, you know, you know, either underfunded or negatively funded for the past six years. Um, and you know that we're, you know, this is not, you know, a grab by any stretch of the imagination. We're just trying to stay uh, level services and 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 start to pick off some of the things that we've had to cut in, in the past year, past two years. Um, they took it under advisement. We're still, they're still waiting for the King Phillips presentation to come in. I know the King Phillips presentation is going to be substantially higher. Um, uh, last I heard they were looking for 1.2 million, but that could have changed. Um, 1.2 million from each town, so the $3.6 million increase. Um, so our little $400,000 increase. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. What percentage does that represent? 10, 12. Um, so um, that's, that's, you know, they, that could have changed, but they haven't presented to the advisory board yet. So um, that's going to be a big, you know, you know, depending on where the advisory board comes down on that. Um, then, of course, as, you know, as everyone knows, um, if Plainville and Rentham vote to give them the increase, um, it doesn't matter what um, Norfolk votes because Two against one wins, um, so that's that's where we stand on that. Uh, Jeff isn't here on King Philip or technology. A policy subcommittee? Do you have any? Do we? We don't have anything. No, we don't new have ones. anything. Okay. We were supposed to meet today, but uh, two of the three of us were sick today. So oh, okay. Don't can't really hold a committee. I, I, I was just saying. I know a lot of people are sick at H all of day as well. So hopefully, hopefully it'll. The, Spring break is coming right at the right time and clean out the school. Um, also, the TPA has made two additional requests, and I think this isn't actually the TPA. It's more the uh, sixth grade parent. Um, yeah, I think this is the sixth grade parents group. Um, just uh, it, this isn't so much a fundraiser. It's just being able to send this home. Um, uh, end of the year, they have a field day, and then an after promote after graduation party. And so just to be able to send these forms home to for $20 for the sixth grade field day, which provides them with a T-shirt. I think they usually have something else, say like 13 on it with all their signatures, cool. um, lunch, drinks, and snacks, and then an ice cream truck and a DJ entertainment. This is also what they do some of the fundraisers for. And then after that, then uh, the either the day of graduation or the following day, they do a party at the Park Terrace Pool Club over in Plainville. And that's seven dollars per student, um, and so they just wanted to make sure that they were okay sending both of these things out. 
are we invited to the party? For uh, for twenty dollars or for seven dollars, I'm sure you can go. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> turn down the cash. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, but you only you we've already determined that you only get to eat locally grown fresh vegetables. Yeah, so it's not a uh, so so you yeah. don't get any of the hot dogs that's or the what, ice cream truck. We'll what, get you some we, leafy spinach. That's what we need to feed to the kid. <laughs> I'm already fat. <laughs> it's not going to hurt now. We're trying to help you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out help. There's fruit, there's salad, and there's water. You can have those. You don't get any of the <laughs> pizza. You don't get any of the pizza, the chips, or the punch. Um, I can bring my own punch. <laughs> all in, you know, I will not get you invited. Exactly. Um, well, I'm not going to share it. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And moving right along, uh, everyone have a chance to review the minutes of the March 19th meeting. It was a nice quick meeting, so yes. nice quick minutes. And then there's also in there the meetings minutes that we don't necessarily need to approve just a Dr. Olardi's uh, presentation for the budget subcommittee. Okay, is there a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And next meeting. We had it on for May, I think it was originally scheduled for May 7th, but that's town meeting. May 14th is what I got. Does May 14th work with you, Thomas? It's fine for me. Uh, as of right now, it does. I may end up getting other town meeting conflicts that will. Oh, that's juggling. right. Juggling, but as of right now, it looks good. Okay. It's okay. This takes priority. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <too>. And the uh, <laughs> abstention, the other two. Yeah, agree to whatever we say. Well, yeah, they, they, they don't really have a choice. <laughs> just showed up. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. Any, uh, any other new business? Any other old business? Motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs>